This is the day in the life of a private tutor. <laughs> Today, we are exploring the day in the life of a private tutor in Singapore. Hi, good morning. This is my cousin Curling. She is 25 years old this year and she is a full-time private tutor. It is a Sunday morning and the first thing that she does is to check her daily schedule for her classes on that day. Curling has converted a room in her home into a makeshift classroom and has cupboards full of assessment books, test papers and her own notes. She prepares for her classes by printing her notes and cleaning up her classroom. She then brushes her teeth, changes her clothes, and proceeds for breakfast. What's your schedule like? This is about you. We are usually 9 to 6. You have the chance to meet your friends. Evenings usually, like, that's why my Saturday and Sundays, I usually make it that so I don't have evening classes. Because my line of work, if don't do that, wow, I really got no social life. <laughs> <laughs> really, really got no social life. You are basically just dealing with kids. How about like different students? Because they have different pace of learning, right? Mm. So how do you balance it in class? What I do sometimes is ask them to help their weaker uh, classmates. If you can teach someone and they can understand, means you completely understand this topic. So they are not competitive in that sense, right? Nowadays, is that they are really not very competitive. Mm. But I still feel that like uh, elite schools are still quite competitive. It's a very toxic culture, I feel. If this person cannot do well, in this subject, doesn't mean that they are failure in life. It just means that they are not good at this subject. So I understand she's very good at art, but then she cannot do math. The school also say like, oh, the art is not important. Why are you taking? Like you take whatever art is is just there for you to get the score. The school said that you know, the, ah. the principal said that. Yeah, I was just like very shocked. It is disappointing to hear that there are still schools that do not encourage the arts. It feels almost like they are killing the dreams of aspiring artists. Have you experienced similar situations before? Curling students arrive for her first session of the day, Secondary 4 Elementary Math. Let's take a look at her class. Because A, we don't have the diameter. We don't even know what the center is. We this and go. So, for the second court, we have two. Sad to say that I've returned my 16-year-old math knowledge back to school. Bye -bye. After two hours, class has finally ended. Yay! Curling keeps her notes and then proceeds for a quick lunch. Hello. Here comes the student for the second class of the day. This 11-year-old boy is preparing for PSLE, arguably one of the most important exams in Singapore, which determines the school that the student can enter when he's 13. What's this? Cookie? Thank you. This is Curling's last lesson of the day. She is teaching math to two 10 year old students. Do you think teacher Curling is a good teacher? Okay. Is she an okay teacher? I don't know. <laughs> so, how's today? I'm very tired. Third, third class, very tired. Do you think you can do this for life? <laughs> <laughs> For the next few years, maybe, think, yeah. After mm. that? After that, see how. Because this job very dependent on work of mouth. So if by work of mouth it doesn't do well, then probably we'll switch over to like a corporate job or something. What motivates you to keep going? I think being a tutor or being a teacher in general, it's a more close contact way of helping them, which is what keeps me going. Because I think when I was a child, not a lot of teachers got help me when I needed help. Which is why one of my biggest factors is that I don't want to be that kind of teacher. <clears throat> After class, Curling shows me her collections of notes and gifts of appreciation that she had received over the years. She carefully stores the notes she received from her students in a notebook. Why didn't you become like an NIE wow. teacher? Because <laughs> my degree was from a private degree, uh -huh. so I've heard and tried before. But the chances of a private degree candidate to enter into a, a school as an indigenous is very difficult. Um, I've tried like at least 10 times, then just couldn't get in, so I changed to private tuition. 
Yeah. But do you think it hinders you from getting students? People do find tutors that are based on NIE. Mm. I don't think it matters because just to me it's like just because you're smart doesn't mean you can actually teach well. <laughs> so so do you think parents nowadays have like very high or unrealistic expectations of their kids? I think just being in Singapore in general, like, you there is this certain competitiveness because it is the nature of Singapore. Some parents I, I got they all say just uh oh uh it's okay, I'm not expecting much. Pass can already. I put too high expectation later, the expectation will go down. <laughs> but there are also parents that also tell me say if it's not an A they they they, they cannot accept it. What if your student don't want to study? Then what will you do? I had a student, the family was so strict that she told me that tuition was like the only f- place that she feels free. <gasps> Freedom. Tuition. From tuition. That's how strict the family was like. I think like one hour of Wi-Fi or TV a day only. And she cannot use her phone. Her phone was controlled by the parents. And she's like 16. So she's not, well, it's not that she doesn't want to do well. She just feels so unfair that she doesn't feel like wanting to do well. Like there's no purpose for me to do well. Mm. So a lot of it it, it, it depends on many different factors, which is why every child treatment is different. Mm. Yeah. It's dinner time and Colleen goes out for a meal with her siblings and her cousins. Actually, what made you go into tutoring? During my uni days, I also was teaching part-time. So it's just continued from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She has her dinner at Saizera, a Japanese-Italian restaurant that many Singaporeans frequent for its relatively affordable meals. Just look at how mouth-watering the food is. After dinner, she hangs around the mall with her group before heading home. Before you leave, can I ask you one last question? Mm. Do you have any advice that you want to give to our viewers? I think to parents mostly is just please take care of your child's mental health well being. They are the biggest emotional support for your child. Then for kids, please always talk to people and please always try to voice out your opinions because as adults we find it very hard also sometimes to help you if you don't say something I think to my generation people who are working Hustle <laughs> Xiaoyo oh. <laughs> Hustle 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bye bye As Kerling mentioned that she would be going to sleep once she heads home we ended our filming for that day so thanks for watching till the end of the video. I hope that you have enjoyed this video as much as I did making them. After hearing some of Curling's stories, I hope that parents will give their children more autonomy and allow them to make their own decisions. On a more personal note, when I was growing up, my parents had helped me make many major decisions in life. And while this was helpful, I felt that it resulted in me not being able to trust my own judgment. Another thing is private degrees. Are local degrees really more valuable than private degrees? especially when becoming a public teacher? Well, do let me know what you think. And yeah, this is not sponsored, but if you are looking for a tutor, I've left Curling's email address in the video description below. I hope to feature more day in the live videos, so if you have an interesting story to share, do hit me up and let me know. And that's all. Thank you.